I have been watching quietly in the shadows, waiting to see the moment I would strike and release a video on Xbox. And I think this is the one I want to do about this particular topic. Now, we are going through the midst of a ridiculous trial right now between Xbox versus the FTC and the larger world over this antitrust suit. And I'm not going to get into the legal ease. There are lawyers and paralegals who do a much better job than yours truly talking about it. However, what really has boiled, at least to me, this issue down into two very distinct game development camps. You have PlayStation Nintendo on one side of the table and you have Xbox on the other. Why are PlayStation and Nintendo lumped together? Well, it's because they have invested a significant amount of time and a significant amount of money in building up their home brands. These are brands that started small and over time developed into phenomenal game studios that have released games that are absolutely characteristic of their respective brand. Sony has always hung on to their first party titles and they really started to kind of dig deep into the Xbox machine really around the end of the PlayStation 3 but definitely into the era of PlayStation 4 where the hottest place to play games was PlayStation because you were getting a machine that was comparable to the Xbox and had a very exclusive library specific to that system to back it up. And if I told you the name Naughty Dog, you would instantly think of a Naughty Dog-esque game, right? Because that is what they are known for. That's their pedigree. And they've been doing this for a very long time, and they have won a lot of awards and made a ton of dough doing it. Likewise, and the reason Nintendo is lumped into that is Nintendo is doing the same thing. Nintendo has their individual brands, which so just branded under the Nintendo umbrella. But you see the same types of games over and over again, and you know what to expect in terms of quality, in terms of performance, in terms of what you can expect from a Nintendo game. And this is true, obviously, with a zillion different franchises. I'll just throw out a few. Pokemon, Mario, racing games like F-Zero or Mario Kart. Where is F-Zero, by the way? We need more F-Zero in our life, don't we? But these are both companies, both Nintendo and PlayStation, companies who have built up a brand and who have kind of done it on their own. And that's why I think their loyalty is just so high. Now look over at the Xbox side. Look at what Xbox has done. Look at the studios that they have developed. Yes, there are a few. You can absolutely name a few studios like Turn 10 who has started off small and has grown monumental in size and scope. But when you start looking at other studios, they are acquisitions that have been bought and turned into Microsoft Studios that clearly do not have that adhesive glue or magic that the Nintendo or PlayStation Studios have. 343 Industries and The Coalition come to mind as franchises that were basically bought and grown into Microsoft Studios. And that is what the core of this email is about. And that is the exact reason why I'm talking about it today. This article comes to us from IGN.com. I will post a link to it in the description box below. So while you're down there leaving a comment, go ahead and click a link and read it for yourself or just listen to me talk about it. It reads, Xbox Studios Head and that, by the way, is Matt Booty, said Microsoft could spend Sony out of business in a 2019 email. Xbox Studios head Matt Booty said that Microsoft could spend Sony out of business. And this, by the way, came in evidence in an upcoming, an or the ongoing, not upcoming, God, I'm glad we're at least in the middle of this stupid thing, so it'll be over soon, uh, antitrust trial in San Francisco. Uh, Matt Booty said, we are in a very unique position to be able to go spend Sony out of business. Now, keep in mind that Sony's back end, the business that built Sony, has largely gone under. Sony was known largely for consumer electronics, radios, headsets, Walkmans, televisions, laptops. You don't really see those brands of Sony thing anymore, do you? That's because Sony's largely dried up a lot of that. Yes, there are still other cash flows into the Sony machine, but a lot of their revenue is gone. That's what makes a company like Nintendo so fascinating that they started as a trading card company 
and everything they have done has been in-house. And all of the studios and the hardware and everything that is Nintendo has been done by Nintendo for Nintendo. And it has that seal of quality, which was incredibly contentious back in the 80s during the NES days. But the fact is, if you buy a Nintendo product, whether it be a piece of merchandise, whether it be a console, or whether it be a video game, you know what you're going to get. There is a seal associated with that that means something. Xbox, unfortunately, doesn't have that. Xbox does have a parent company in Microsoft, which essentially owns the entire world in terms of computer software, whether it be their Windows operating system or their Office products and you know all the other ancillary development suites that Microsoft has a hand in. But when you really look at the Xbox brand itself, they only have deep pockets because daddy has deep pockets. And they that's a good place to be, trust me. Um, so this makes so much sense. Microsoft did not do well investing in their own brands early on. They gave up too fast, trying to be too flashy. During the Xbox genre, there was a lot of really good franchises which never got sequels, never got the room to cultivate, to develop, to grow. Something that, even though it was painful to live through during the PlayStation 3 days, Sony has done very, very well and has developed these homebrew studios into something that is magical. Xbox, not so much. Booty said that in 10 years, the company would look back and say, it would have been worth spending two or three billion to stay ahead of the competition. And when you start reading all the news articles of all the potential companies that Microsoft wanted to buy, this absolutely makes sense. This is their strategy, to buy things. And here's the emails from Matt Booty to Tim Stewart written on uh, December 17th at 9.49 p.m. Thanks for sharing. Lots to digest here. A different view to the general view might, below might be that we, Microsoft, are in a very unique position to be able to go spend Sony out of business. If we think that video game content matters in 10 years, we might look back and say, totally worth it to lose two or three billion to avoid a, a situation in which Tencent, Google, Amazon, or even Sony have become the Disney of games and the most valuable content. For example, it is practically impossible for anyone to start a new video streaming scale at this point. What content do you base it on? Things like Hulu and CBS All Access will be trivial in the space. In games, Google is three to four years away from being able to have a studio up and running. Spoilers, they didn't pull it off. Amazon has shown no ability to execute on game content. Spoilers, they pulled it off. Content is the one moat that we have in terms of catalog that runs on current devices and capability to create new. Sony is the only other player who could compete with Game Pass, and we have a two-year and 10 million sub lead. Interesting, Matt. You know, you were partially right. Um, you do have a lot of money, and investing in something now will absolutely pay dividends in the future. Bethesda is a great example of this. You guys just blew billions of dollars to buy Bethesda to ensure that Starfield was an Xbox-exclusive title. We'll see if that pays dividends, if Starfield pays off. I suspect it's going to be pretty darn good, and I suspect you're going to be happy with that purchase. But it doesn't obviously just end there, and the article goes on to basically say the same thing. The email is a frank discussion of Xbox's competition and business challenges. Um, David Cuddy, an Xbox spokesperson, responded to the comment saying, hey, listen, the email is a couple of years old and it predates the announcement of our acquisition. It refers to industry trends that were never pursued and unrelated. Of course, the FTC is not going to respond to comment. Um, but what this does show is that Microsoft has for a very long time, to very little surprise of anyone, basically bought their way to the table. And it's not to say that the Xbox brand in of itself, when you look back at that day with Bill Gates and The Rock standing on stage, when you look back at the launch of the Xbox 360, this does not mean to say that Xbox is a bad brand and Xbox couldn't figure it out on their own because they were. The problem is Xbox deviated and they did not believe in their own brand and they instead stopped. And instead of investing back into the companies that made them what they were today, either shut them down or subcontracted the work out to other companies. And that's where we got into a problem. That's where the issue started to arise. Instead of investing on companies that made them where they are, they stopped. And now 
I have a team of A-listers of all of these Xbox studios that have been around forever and a day. And they are having a hard time delivering content because they don't have that soul of what defines them. I'll be doing a video review tomorrow on The Gunk. And I love the game. It was a ton of fun. It's from a studio who did something wildly different than anything they've done before. And it actually did pan out, and I'm proud of them. But look at all the Xbox studios over the years that have tried new things and have failed. And what does Xbox do with those games? They kill them. Two Human was supposed to be one of the coolest, most revolutionary games in the planet. It came out, it wasn't great. Did we get a sequel? We did not. Why did we not get a sequel? Because Microsoft is always moving on to the next bigger and better thing. And they're buying things and what they're doing is they are not building their brand. And I think the gist of this article, despite it really kind of focusing on the bulks of the FTC case and the fact that there's an antitrust there and the fact that Xbox is kind of maybe not the best curator for content, I think this email is very damning in that sense. Um, this article goes on to talk about that the trial is still ongoing. The judge will make a decision soon. Um, the Microsoft Activision deal has a July 18th deadline. We are fast approaching that, boys and girls. If the deadline falls through, Microsoft may renegotiate with Activision. Um, the United Kingdom already blocked it. So far, analysts are divided on who seems to be winning the trial. I put air quotes in winning because nobody's winning right now. We want to get back to making games and not focusing on this crap. Many note that Microsoft's executives appear to be crushing their testimonies, but they pointed out that Booty's emails have strengthened the FTC's argument. So very interesting, very uh, telling of what Microsoft has been doing for a very long time in their own words. What I'm worried about is if this trend continues, which it seems like it is. Think of all the studios that Phil Spencer has been advertising and bragging that they bought, and think of what those studios have actually done that has moved the needle. I'll wait, because there aren't any. Uh, Starfield will be the first big one, I think, the one that actually has a chance to say, oh, you know, maybe this was a good investment. Um, there are a lot of other companies out there who are really scrambling right now to figure out what they're going to present games that are in development hell. My term's not theirs, for lack of a better word, because they've been working for years and years and years to just get the game out. And they still haven't yet figured out that reason. And I think when you think about it, this email makes perfect, perfect sense. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this below. Do you agree with my assessment, or am I an overly promotable Sony pony? Sound off below. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.